Hi everyone, it's Dr. Steph. I'm an assistant prof at the University of Toronto where I teach the financial literacy and practice management curriculum for family medicine residents. Today I'm going to be tackling one of the most confusing aspects of being a doctor, understanding the remittance advice or RA. If you find this lecture helpful, please support the channel with a like and subscribe as it shows our department the value in practice management education to encourage more lectures like these to be developed. So today I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about your RA in order for you to understand how the Ministry of Health pays you for your services. Simply put, most doctors are independent contractors and they bill OHIP for the services that they provide. The RA is kind of like a receipt that the ministry gives us to tell us what we got paid in the last month's billing cycle. This report comes out on the 1st to 7th of each month and the actual pay payment hits your bank account around the 15th. A lot of sites will tell you to access your RA from the Medical Claims Electronic Data Transfer site or MCEDT that you can access by having a Go Secure account but I don't suggest you do it that way. You can see your RA by going on any third-party billing software site. So if you don't know what that is, I've linked the time-stamped lecture on this where I talk about the different billing software above and in the description below. You don't actually have to use the software to bill. You can just sign up for an account and just to see the RA. The other way to access it is through your EMR system. So I am using Acuro in our clinic. So you would click claims and then you would double click the date uh, that you wanna see and then your RA will come up. Uh, if you are using a different EMR like TELUS PSS or OSCAR, the best suggestion is to ask your clinic colleague or manager during your EMR training as it can vary across EMR systems. Now, what the RA is useful for is telling you the breakdown of where your revenue as a doctor comes from. Having worked in all three models, each one is kind of like a stepping stone to understanding the other. So if you bill fee-for-service, it's very simple. What you bill is what you get. So you provide a service and then you get paid for that service most of the time. You can also get a bit of a bonus for seeing patients who are older than 65. If you're working in a family health group or FIG uh, or comprehensive care model, CCM, you basically get what the fee-for-service doctors get, but also some comprehensive capitation and a bonus for working after hours and weekends, as well as some special premiums uh, for providing care to specific populations and a preventative care bonus that will become obsolete in 2024. When it does, I'll update the description and the pinned comment below. Now, if you work in a foe or a fin, that is where things get complicated because your income will come from so many different sources that if you don't pay attention to your RA, you can lose out on income potential. The bureaucracy and administrative burden is a lot for family doctors to keep track of and can lead to burnout. So similar to a FIG, for your non-rostered patients, what you bill is what you get. It's like fee-for-service. But for your rostered patients, your otherwise fee-for-service billings now become the base rate and a blended fee-for-service premium, also known as shadow billing. This might be confusing terms to you, but as you hear the terms over and over again in my lectures, you'll start becoming familiar with them. And similar to a FIG, you'll notice you get pretty much the same premiums and bonuses and a bit more of the comprehensive capitation. The access bonus, the GMLP, and the office admin payments are unique sources of revenue that are just for foes. At this point in the lecture, I would suggest that you open up your RA in another screen and follow along as I help you understand each of the sections. The premium payment section is the first section you'll see, and in a fee-for-service or a FIG model, you'll see the 15% bonus that you get for seeing patients over 65. The premium, the payment is shown as uh, MTD or month to date, as well as your YTD or year to date amounts. And the acronyms GA and IA refers to how many times you've billed a general assessment and or intermediate assessments. In a FO, you'll see the same thing, but also something called a blended premium. This is also known as shadow billing. 
because for your rostered patients, you don't get paid the full amount, you just get paid 19.41% or a shadow of the code. Why? Because you're already getting a base payment, a base rate, and a capitation on this patient. You might also notice something on my RA, which is FPA. This stands for Focused Practice Assessment, which in my case, I do addictions, so sometimes I bill a FPA code and get a 15% bonus on it. Pro tip, if you are billing in a group number, like in a walk-in clinic setting, and the walk-in clinic collects your billings, then distributes it to you, minus the overhead, make sure you check your RA to ensure that the premiums you're getting are going to you as well. If you scroll down, fiscal year is the next section. The start of the billing year is not January, but April. And this is only important to know when you're submitting your preventative care bonuses at the end of March. But like I said before, these might become obsolete next year. The other reason to know about the year end is when to bill a premium code, which I'll discuss in a later slide. The other sections about threshold is more applicable to faux and thin models because now there is an individual limit of 57,000 for how many in-basket codes you can bill. So in-basket codes are considered eligible for a threshold. Procedure codes or technical uh, and out-of-basket codes are, or other, these are not eligible for that threshold. Finally, if you're working with different groups, your individual and groups billings are also shown here, with the four zeros being your solo billings. The payment summary report is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you get to see a summary of how much you got paid. So in a FIG, it's pretty simple. It's just your fee-for-service billings plus uh, the capitation and any preventative care bonuses that will become obsolete. Uh, for a FO, it's a bit more complex. So you have the fee-for-service, blended fee-for-service premium, also known as shadow billing, plus comprehensive care capitation, uh, plus any access bonuses, which are about 18% bonus for if your patients actually come to see you instead of a walk-in clinic, for example. So anytime your rostered patient sees another doctor and they bill in basket codes, it comes out of your access bonus. Now, I don't work in a long-term care setting, but if you did, you might have a different access bonus as well. Finally, you can add on the GMLP or group management and leadership payment. Especially if you're the faux lead, this is a small amount to cover your time doing admin stuff for the faux. And more on that in a later slide. So if you scroll all the way to the very bottom, you'll see the total paid to you or your group, depending on how your group structures the payment. The next section is the premiums. So you only get access to these if your patients are rostered to you. So fee-for-service billers do not get premiums. If you're working in a FIG, um, so on the screen are the premiums that you get access to and how much you get paid uh, for how many uh, each patients of that type are seen. So for example, a common one people ask me about is the PCSMI, which stands for Primary Care Serious Mental Illness. So for example, if I saw three patients, then I would get a $600 premium. Uh, when I remember to bill a Q020 or a Q021 for the bipolar or schizophrenia codes before end of fiscal year. I personally bill them anytime I see someone with those conditions, just so I don't forget the bonus, but some people will set an EMR reminder for themselves. Now, when you compare it to a foe, there are a bit more premiums available for you. So for example, a hospital, uh, office procedures, and prenatal uh, care, for instance. At this point in the talk, if you're confused about some of the terminology, such as shadow billing, or you want a refresher on the premiums, you can watch my video about faux billing that I've linked above and in the description below. The more iterations that you hear these terms and work through the cases, the more comfortable you're, you're going to get at billing. Now, the next section is faux RA specific. Most foes practice in a group and have a group bank account. In our foe, each of our individual billings go to us individually and we pay back the overhead to our clinic. But the GMLP, the access bonus, and the OPAP or office practice admin payment don't get deposited to each individual patient, uh, physician. 
it goes to a group bank account, and depending on the foe, it will get divvied up to each physician annually or biannually. So the first one is the GMLP, which goes to your foe lead and is calculated by $1 per patient per year. So even though I'm the foe lead, we've kind of divided it up amongst ourselves as we're all pretty young and equally part of managing the foe. The 351 that you're seeing on my RA is the monthly amount. So if we have over 4,000 patients in our foe, for example, the yearly amount would be about $4,000. Next, the access bonus that I talked about earlier is paid at the group level. So if your patients have a lot of outside use, then you have to remember to deroster them because once the outside use eats up all of your access bonus, it'll start using your other group members' access bonus too. So then you might need to pay back the group if your access bonus eats into theirs or goes into the negative often. Fortunately, ours is positive right now. The OPAP uh, pays about 12,500 to 25,000 per year to help cover an office administrator. Some foes might go with a third party billing or management service, so this might go towards subsidizing that service. Next is the summary categorization of claims. This is another component of the foe RA. First thing to point out is what is included and excluded. So included means how many in-basket codes you bill. Excluded means how many out-of-basket codes. So in this picture, enrolled or rostered patients that you build out-of-basket codes for show up under excluded. The higher the dollar value, the better. Non-enrolled means uh, patients that you build fee-for-service on. So, you know, included means that you build in-basket codes for them. Higher numbers of those uh, might mean that you should probably roster more of them. And number th next is the uh, network colleague. So this is when you see your uh, colleagues' patients in after-hours clinic. You only get the shadow billing amount, so sometimes there's an internal economy for your colleague to pay you back the fee-for-service billing code value of that patient for you seeing uh, their patients. And then at the very bottom, you get the total amount, which you can add to the dollar amount from your previous payment summary section for kind of a total understanding of how much you made that month. Now, those who work in a patient enrollment model, like listed here, this section shows the breakdown of how much capitation you get. So as you can see, the faux daily rate for the same age patient is a little bit higher than the FIG billing, daily billing rate. Uh, specific to FOS, most of your capitations will come from your base rate, and the total amount from that is shown by these charts as divided by female and male patients. The last section is the access bonus summary. So this is a faux specific section that tells you how much access bonus your group could have got in total if there was no outside use. Um, and how much outside use, uh, as well, it also tells you how much outside use all of your faux patients had. So in our case, it was around 7,000. And then this is like how much your group keeps at the end. So to see how much your patients contributed to your outside use, that would actually be under the payment summary report we talked about earlier. So that would be more of your individual uh, outside use and access bonus. So to reduce your outside use, you can either deroster these patients who frequently go to the walk-in clinic, or you can have a discussion with them about how this system works. So in order to see which patients specifically used outside services and which ones to deroster, you can access your MCEDT on GoSecure, like I mentioned before. And to do that, you can click the MCEDT service uh, upload download um, category right here. And then you can click download the uh, EC outside use report. So right over here. And then when, you, when it asks you to save the file, you just save it with extension dot XML. And then you open up Microsoft Excel and click yes when the pop-up shows up asking to open as an XML table. Then it'll show the list of patients 
by their name, the billing code that was billed, uh, when they went and sought outside services and their, the date. So in this video, we summarized all the different components of the RA, but we didn't really talk about RA reconciliation, how to fix billing errors. To learn more about those topics, please check out my other billing videos. So in the PGY2 uh, billing lecture, I do talk more about the rejection codes and what to do to address them. Feel free to leave a comment if you have a question, and thanks for watching.